We sent 515 emails asking for backlinks. And today I'm going to share the stats from our campaign, the exact process we used, and key learning points that you can use in your link building efforts. Stay tuned. What's up everyone, Sam O here with Ahrefs and this is the second episode of our three-part series on creating linkable content and actually getting links to it. So if you're new to the series, the first video was all about strategically building a statistics page that we thought would generate links. And even before we started creating that content, we found roughly 4,200 websites we can contact. Of course, this number is unfiltered and unvetted. And since I showed you how we created that content in part one, now I'll show you how we built links to it here in part two. So as we were planning our experiment, we wanted to report accurate results for our link building campaign. So to isolate backlinks from our email outreach efforts, we didn't promote the posts to our existing audience. So no email subscribers, customers, or social followers. On top of that, we hid it from our blog index and category pages, RSS feeds, and we even no indexed the page so it couldn't be discovered in search. The post was basically invisible unless we sent you an outreach email. So without further ado, here are the results from our campaign. We sent 515 emails, 473 were deliverable, and 42 bounced. And based on deliverable emails, we had a reply rate of 17.55% and a conversion rate of 5.75%, which works out to 27 links from unique websites. But two other cool things happened. Number one, we got an additional five referring domains from sites we didn't reach out to. And the most probable reason is that some people were discovering our page from those that linked to us and from the odd social shares. In total, we had around 19 shares on Facebook and two on Twitter, none that we started. So that brings our referring domains count to 32, or a 6.8% conversion rate. And number two, some of the sites we reached out to linked to us more than once both from new and old posts. So in total, we had 36 editorial links from unique posts. But let's use our first conversion rate of 5.75% on referring domains, as I think it's a better reflection of our results. Finally, I wanna give you an idea of the quality of links we picked up. All of the links we built were editorial links on contextually relevant pages. Now as for metrics, let's simplify it and talk about just two. Domain rating, which represents the overall strength of a website's backlink profile, and domain level search traffic. So this is what the domain rating distribution looked like for our acquired links. Nine of the 32 referring domains had a DR of 70 or greater. That's 28.1% of our total referring domains. 12 of the referring domains had a DR of 40 to 69, which is 37.5%. And the remaining 11 had DR values of 4 to 39, which is 34.4%. Now let's look at the distribution of websites based on domain level search traffic. And these are based on search traffic numbers from Ahrefs, which are usually underestimations. So they don't include other traffic sources like direct, referral, and social. So six of the linking websites get over 10,000 monthly search visits, one that actually gets over a million organic visitors. Another six get between 1,000 to 10,000 monthly organic visits. 16 websites get between 100 to 1,000 monthly organic search visits. And four get zero search visitors, which all happen to be websites we didn't reach out to. So are these results good, bad, or average? Well, to answer that, you need to understand the full scope of the process. Things we intentionally didn't do, like automated follow-ups and things we weren't willing to do like link exchanges. So throughout this video, I'll share some of my insights as well as the more granular stats that no one really talks about. But I'd love to know your thoughts based on your experience and what you know of our campaign so far. Do you think the results were good, bad, or average? Let me know in the comments. Also, I will warn you that if you're new to link building, some of the concepts and thought processes are a bit more advanced than our other link building tutorials. So feel free to ask any questions in the comments and we'd be happy to answer. Let's dig into how we executed this campaign. So the first step was to get a list of link prospects. And we started by looking at the top ranking pages for the Cori SEO statistics that had lots of backlinks. So when we were prospecting, we saw that these three pages cumulatively have over 4,200 referring domains pointing at them. 
and we found another page that had around 980 referring domains. So we opened all four of their backlink profiles in Ahrefs Site Explorer and set the one link per domain filter, since we don't want to pitch the same site multiple times. The next thing we did was look for reasons why people were linking to these stats pages. So looking at one of the backlink profiles, you'll see that the majority of links are happening because people are referencing a specific stat. Pretty obvious considering the topic of the page. But which stats are being mentioned the most? Let's head over to the anchors report to get a summarized view. As you can see, there are tons of links that can be attributed to this 93% stat. So we continued looking through this report and jotted down around 5 to 10 popular stats based on the link anchors. So with this information, we needed to check off two checkboxes. Number one, are there enough people linking because of these stats? If yes, then that can make a link building campaign worth the effort. And number two, can we justify a good reason for them to link to us instead of or in addition to the current link? So we went back to the backlinks report and searched for mentions of the stat in the anchor and surrounding text of the link. And as you can see, there are well over 700 links from unique websites where they're mentioning the stat 93%. So that ticks off checkbox number one. Now, if we visit the page, you'll see that the stat isn't even mentioned on it. So that checks box number two. We have a good reason to contact them. So after analyzing all the stats pages and their specific stats, we came up with two main outreach angles, which were number one, the page you're linking to doesn't mention the stat. We have more recent data. And number two, the stat you're mentioning is X years old, but new data suggests whatever the new data point was. So we exported the report and then we did the exact same thing with all of the other stats and all of the other stats pages. And because we were finding outreach angles for individual stats, this allowed us to easily segment our link prospects so we could send personalized emails to everyone in a somewhat automated way without being spammy. So we imported each of these reports into Google Sheets and labeled each URL according to their segment. And by the end, we had a list of 1,986 URLs. The next thing we did was an initial cleanup job of our prospects list. So first, I deduplicated URLs from the same domain since websites could potentially be linking to more than one of the stats pages. This was easy to do using Google Sheets. I just parsed the root domain from each URL, clicked on data, and then remove duplicates. Finally, I set it to analyze just our root domain column and then hit remove duplicates. The final thing I did here was to remove prospects based on link attributes in the page's SEO metrics. From our list of deduplicated prospects, I further narrowed them down to just follow links and websites that got at least a certain amount of organic traffic across their entire domain. And I pulled domain level traffic using Ahrefs API with Google Sheets script editor. Alternatively, you can use Ahrefs batch analysis tool. Just paste in up to 200 domains and set the target mode to domain with all its subdomains. You can then export the file and run a VLOOKUP against the root domains. So after all was said and done, we had a list of 902 prospects that we'd need to manually vet. Now, if you've watched any of my other link building videos, then I'm sure you know that I'm a huge advocate of using APIs and automation when possible. So to kick off our link building campaign fast, I took all the URLs and put them into a custom tool to scrape as many of the author names as I could. And in total, I got 741 scraped author names, but it was far from perfect. But I still took all of those names and ran them through Hunter's API to search for an email address. In total, Hunter sent back 452 email addresses. And with email addresses that were found, I simultaneously ran them using Neverbounce's API, which would tell us if the email addresses were deliverable. So after around 20 to 30 minutes of automation, we had a total of 168 valid emails, 92 catch-alls that needed some manual intervention, and 178 emails that were not deliverable. So these would need to be searched for manually. These simple automations made our vetting process much faster because all we had to do for valid emails was check that the pages were of decent quality and they were still mentioning the stat we were about to pitch each prospect. And the entire outreach process was handled by Vlad, who's a member of our marketing team. 
He basically took a few hours each week to vet pages, find emails, and send them. Now, to simplify the vetting process, I set a list of criteria for people we should and should not contact. Flab would then set a specific status based on the page and domain so we could keep track of our campaign stats. So based on this list of statuses, we disqualified spammy pages, those in another language since we wouldn't be able to send effective outreach emails, ones where we couldn't find an email, and URLs where we had existing relationships. And for all pages that matched our set criteria, we'd mark them as good. The last thing we did in the preparation phase was write our outreach template and create personalization fields for each contact. Now before we continue, I want to make a quick note on the concept of personalization. In my opinion, there's a balance between sending a relevant, well-written email and sending a creepy one. First off, adding someone's first name in your email doesn't mean it's a personalized email. That's just the personalization field. But on the other extreme, you don't want to say things that'll be too personal, which might come off a bit strong. For example, saying, Hey Sam, then whatever your outreach pitch is. By the way, I heard the weather in Toronto is 22 degrees with a 90% chance of precipitation. Guess it would be better to stay indoors instead of playing golf. Love, Josh. While this might seem personalized, it's a bit strange and also irrelevant to the purpose of your email. So the approach we took was to personalize emails based on a specific thing they said in their post. And of course, that was the stat, which again is why I think segmenting link prospects on large link profiles makes a ton of sense. So here's what our exact email template looked like in Pitchbox. And since it's basically a bunch of merge fields, I'll fill them in as I read you a sample. Hi Sam, I saw you mentioned how 93% of online experiences begin with a search engine on your page about e-commerce SEO. That stat is actually 14 years old. More recent research from 2019 suggests that this number has gone down to 68%. I think it's lower because social and other sources now account for around one third of traffic. We published this and a few other fresh SEO stats here. Not sure if you're actively editing posts, but might be worth an update if you are, no pressure. Cheers, Vlad. Now to set up these merge fields, we basically created another worksheet called Outreach Emails, and it looks like this. And then within our export sheet, we basically just did VLOOKUPs based on the segment the contact falls in, which would then automatically populate our merge fields. Then it was just a matter of exporting the sheet, uploading it to Pitchbox, and then making sure that our emails made sense before actually sending them. Now, if you don't use Pitchbox, you can do the same thing in pretty much any other outreach tool. And that's pretty much it in terms of the entire process for setting up our link building campaign. Now let's revisit that thought again about whether our results were good, bad, or average. And there isn't a straight answer because your mileage will vary based on way too many factors. But for simplicity's sake, let's compare our reply rates to a couple industry studies. So our response rate of 17.55% was pretty high in comparison to the 8.5% that was studied by Pitchbox and Backlinko. So in total, we had 83 people actually respond to our initial email. Now with a good number of responses, our link acquisition rate on referring domains was 5.75%, which seems pretty average at face value. So why the big discrepancy? Two reasons. Number one, we had a ton of requests for link exchanges and other things. So in total, eight people requested a link exchange, three people asked us to pay for the link, and six people requested something else, like a free Ahrefs account, or for us to share their content on social media. And these requests came from small websites with low authority and little traffic, as well as big sites with millions of visitors and high link authority. Now, link exchanges aren't something we participate in, we've never and will never pay for links, and we don't just hand away Ahrefs accounts. So in that respect, we had very little power or actually no room for negotiation. But if we had done the link exchanges, traded Ahrefs accounts, and did the social shares, that would have brought our referring domains count to 46, which would have been a 9.7% link acquisition rate. And that's pretty good in my books, considering the number of emails we sent and the fact that we weren't soliciting trades. The second reason for the discrepancy is that five people actually linked to the source of the stat rather than to the article we pitched. And these are people that actually replied to us, so there were probably more. 
and it comes with the nature of the type of the post we created. A curated list of the most recent SEO stats we could find, where obviously we'll be linking to the source on the page. And I'll expand on this in the third part of this series. Another thing to consider when evaluating the success of our campaign is the quality of the links. As I've already mentioned, all of our links came from topically relevant pages and websites. And the majority of our links were from pretty good sources. Now let's talk about some key takeaways as well as our shortcomings. So based on our overall stats, I think it's telling about the current state of outreach for links. Based on my experience, the number of people looking for some kind of exchange or payment has skyrocketed. More and more people understand the value of a link, and whether it be from knowledge or personal experience, they know that some people will give them tangibles for it. So in my opinion, it's only going to get harder to get links, which will require you to go with more of a targeted approach, especially since tons of people are sending horrible spammy outreach emails. So by sending good emails, you actually have a chance to stand out from the rest of the crowd. Now there were two shortcomings from our campaign that I think contributed to a lower conversion rate. First is the age of the links. I've already told you that one of our pitch angles was that 93% stat was 14 years old and wasn't even on the stats page. So there were definitely pages in there that had aged without an update. And second, which was probably the biggest limiting factor to our link acquisition rate, is that we didn't send any automated follow-up emails. Follow-ups definitely help increase conversion rates. I've seen it in my own campaigns, and the guys at Authority Hacker shared more convincing data from their study on 600,000 outreach emails. They said that sending three follow-up emails has at least doubled their results. So why didn't we send them? Simple, we didn't want to bother people without good reason. The main reason for this campaign was for a case study, not because we need tons of links. So the only people we followed up with are those that said they would link to us, but didn't make the change within two weeks. Which by the way, helped us get more links. So everything is out on the table, and you might be wondering if doing outreach for links is still worth the effort, considering lower than expected conversion rates. Of course it is. These stats are from just one campaign, and our results can't be generalized to all outreach emails. Yes, you might find people wanting something in return these days, but it's still possible to build good links without paying or trading for them. So to conclude part two, if you plan on doing outreach, I strongly recommend going with more of a segmented approach and to stay away from sending 10,000 identical emails to every person. The additional effort can go a long way. Now, outreach for links isn't the only way to build links to your page. You can actually build them passively using PPC advertising, or at least that was my theory. So in the final part of this series, I'm gonna show you advertising campaigns that we ran to two different types of stats pages and links that came as a result of our PPC advertising campaigns. This video will drop a week from this video's publishing date, so make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on that. Also, let me know your thoughts on our results, your results, or the state of link building in general. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and share this video with others who can benefit from it. I'll see you in the final part of this case study.